Today we're going to learn how to control digital outputs. This is a fundamental feature found on most microcontrollers and forms the basis for more advanced applications. We'll start with taking a look at what the general purpose input pins are, we'll build an electrical circuit that we can use with our program, and we'll write a sketch to flash an LED on and off. The parts you'll need to follow along with this video are one Arduino Uno compatible board, one breadboard, two jumper wires, one LED, one 220 ohm resistor, and one USB cable compatible with your development board. Before we get started with programming, let's take a look at the microcontroller. The Atmega 328P microcontroller has a total of 23 GPIO lines. These can be used for both digital inputs and outputs. Some of these provide additional functionality that we'll learn about in the future. Now the Arduino Uno development board provides us with convenient pin headers for accessing most of these GPIO lines. I say most because the Arduino developers made some engineering decisions when designing the board. What that means is one of the pins is used for the reset button and two more are used for the 16 MHz crystal or resonator. This leaves us with 20 usable GPIO lines. But wait a second, there are only 14 pins on the Arduino board that say digital. Something that's not evident up front is that all of the pins labeled analog are actually just GPIO pins and we can use them as digital inputs and outputs just like the rest. They have the added capability of being used for analog inputs as well. We'll first connect the ground pin of the Arduino board to the ground bus of the breadboard using one of the jumper wires. Then we connect pin number 6 to one of the available rows on the breadboard. Next we'll connect the longer leg or anode of the LED to the same row we connected pin 6 to. The shorter leg or cathode of the LED will go into the row next to the anode. It's important to connect the LED up correctly because it's polarized, meaning the positive lead, the anode, should always be connected to the positive voltage source and the negative lead, the cathode, should always be connected to the return path or ground. Finally, we connect one of the legs of the 220 ohm resistor to the row with the cathode and the other leg of the resistor will get connected to the ground bus. A resistor doesn't have a specific polarity, so it doesn't matter which leg of the resistor you use for each connection. This circuit will use pin 6 to drive the connected LED with a positive 5 volts from the microcontroller. Logically, current will flow from the anode to the cathode of the LED, turning it on, then flow over the current limiting resistor before reaching the return path, which is our ground bus. Now that we have our circuit built, let's write a little code to control the LED. The Arduino IDE has a number of useful features, and as we progress through these tutorials, we'll explain them in more detail. For today, we'll start with the main text editing field, where all of the code will live. Here you see that some of the default text is already present when we open the application. This includes two blocks of code. The first is the setup function, and the second is the loop function. The setup function is a block of code that will run a single time when the Arduino starts. This means when power is applied or when the reset button is pressed, the setup function will execute once. Then the loop function begins to execute automatically. And this section of code does exactly what you might think. It executes over and over until the reset button is pressed. Most microcontrollers usually require a peripheral to be initialized before it can be used. This process of initializing first and then using corresponds well with the two main functions already created for us. We'll need to first initialize the pin we want to use. This will let the microcontroller know that we want to use the GPIO as an output. Then we can use the pin in the loop function to turn on and off. Here's a look at the finished application we're going to write. Let's break it down line by line. Starting off inside the setup, we need to initialize our pin with the function pin mode, giving it two arguments. The first is the pin number and the second is the mode. The possible modes we can use are output, input, or input pull-up. For this application, we'll use output. For the pin number, we'll simply use number 6, which will correspond to the Arduino pin number 6. Don't forget to put a semicolon at the end of each statement to avoid compiling errors later on. Then inside the loop, we can use the function digital write, again giving it two arguments, this time defining the pin and value. We again use the number 6 for the pin, and we can use the values high or low to identify the state we want the pin to be in at any given moment. The value high will output 5 volts on the corresponding pin, and low will set the pin's output to zero volts. You may have noticed that some of the letters are capitalized while others are not. It's important to remember that the C programming language is case sensitive. The Arduino core will usually capitalize the second word in a function name as a standard naming convention. Arduino also uses all caps for constants like high, low, output, etc. You might think, great, all I have to do is use the digital write function to set the pin high and low, and the loop function will repeat this forever. The LED should turn on and off just like we want. 
Well, this is technically true, but the microcontroller is so fast at executing instructions that the LED just looks like it's on all the time. Let's look at it with an oscilloscope. Here we can see that the pin is in fact turning on and off, but with a frequency of about four microseconds. So we need to do something to help slow the process down and allow us to flash the LED at a rate we can actually see. This is where the delay function comes in handy. Here we can define a single value which corresponds to time in milliseconds. If we want to add a small delay of say half a second, we can use 500 as the value in the delay function. The smaller the number, the shorter the delay. And of course, the larger we make the number, the longer the delay will be. Delay is a great function to help control how fast things are happening in our microcontroller, but it isn't the only tool we have available. In the future, we'll learn how timers can be used in place of the delay function and why you would want to use them. Now with all the code in place, the setup function will run one time, then our loop will repeat over and over effectively blinking the LED. Before we upload the code to the board, we want to verify it. However, before we can verify the code, the IDE needs to know what development board will be used so it knows what compiler to use. To set the board type, select Tools, Boards, Arduino AVR Boards, Arduino Uno. This can be done even without a board connected to the computer yet. Next, we'll use the Verify button, which looks like a check mark in the main toolbar. The Arduino IDE will attempt to compile the code without uploading. You'll see a message that states Compiling, and a progress bar will appear. After a few moments, the message will change to Done Compiling, and the progress bar will go away. The results will be displayed at the bottom of the IDE. There is useful information in the results, such as the amount of memory and RAM that will be used by the sketch. To compile and upload our code, first connect the Arduino Uno to the computer via the USB port. This will provide both the needed 5 volt power and a way to program the board. Next, we need to let the compiler know which communication port the board is using. You can set the port by navigating to Tools, Port, and then selecting the appropriate port your board is on. Finally, we can press the Upload button, which looks like an arrow pointing to the right. The IDE will again compile the program and then upload the executable to the board. Now we can see the LED blinking on and off using the 500 millisecond interval we programmed. In this video, we learned how to build a basic electrical circuit, the structure of a sketch, and we programmed an Arduino Uno to flash an LED on and off. In our next video, we'll add a button to our circuit and learn about digital inputs and pull-up resistors. Until then, thanks for watching.